Well, yeah, I mean, well, at this stage, definitely. So, I mean, I was, I was thinking that, like, once I had the game done and it was, you know, together and polished and everything, that we'd probably get one to two million people playing it because that's kind of what used to play Wing Commanders and some of my past games. Um, but, you know, I didn't think near, I didn't think this early that would be, you know, this many people that would be... You know, because usually, you know, people that back very early, I mean, you know, like, you know, we ask people to essentially, you know, put money up two years, two and a half years before they could play a game. And based on just the fact they would like to see this kind of game again, and they like the stuff I've done before, and, and, and the idea of getting it a little cheaper than when it would be finally done, and also just sort of seeing how it happens, you know, how the sausages get made, uh, kind of thing. Um, so I always thought, you know, well, maybe we can do about 100,000 people um, uh, backing it, but I had no idea that it would be this, I mean, I had no idea that we'd raise this much money and we would have this many people. I mean, it's a testimony to how much people love this genre and how much they've missed it. And I think it's also a testimony to the power of the PC gaming because they sort of, I really do feel like a lot of them felt that no one was building something specifically for them and they were an afterthought. So, I, so there's definitely quite a lot of people that have, uh, you know, a supporting Star Citizen just for that side. So what it's allowing me to do is, is basically um, staff up um, bigger than I would have done if I didn't have as much money to ensure that I'm delivering more of the features and more of the content sooner. <coughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm essentially using it as a guide to like how big and how much I can do early on. But of course, we put some money away to make sure that we can support the online servers and all the rest of the stuff. But we're not looking at any of the money we make now as profit. So basically, we're looking at the money that we're raising now as de de determining the budget of the actual game and the amount of money we put away for um, running servers and stuff. And then after, once the game's out live, that's kind of when we would sort of go, okay, if it's doing really well, then we'll obviously be making some money. But uh, it just means right now that the game's just going to be bigger, richer, and, and cooler from from its earlier state, which is um, pretty. I mean, I like it. It's fun. I mean, I'm, you know, look, I like to make the game. I'm not. I'm not so much about. Oh, I need to make all these millions of dollars. I'm more about. I want to make this game as cool as possible. And so when I was at EA or uh, you know with Microsoft, you always had limitations where you know they would say, well, we can't spend this much because it's going to cost us this much to manufacture and do all this other stuff. Whereas now. Really, the community is sort of setting the budget for the game, which is fantastic. I don't know if you can do this on every game, but for me, this is a really great way to build a game, and I'm really enjoying the community participation. Like, we show stuff, we get feedback. Uh, I mean, I just think it's going to make a better game because um, we're sort of our feedback cycles just sort of ahead of the game. You know, like normally you would make a game and it would go out there and people would play it, and then you would sort of read the comment boards and you would read the reviews, and then maybe it would help you. Uh, make your sequel better, but now I sort of feel like we're getting that feedback loop before we even release the first uh, version of the game. Basically, we have five studios that are working on sort of the five core pillars. So the core pillars are dogfighting, sort of the hangar, persistent universe, planet side, uh, Squadron 42, which is a single player game, and um, the uh, you know shipboarding first person shooter. And so those are all, and so each one of these teams is super focused on making that particular aspect as cool as possible. And uh, so I think it's going to make, a, I definitely think it's going to make a really interesting game and help us deliver something as ambitious as Star Citizen. And then the challenge we have is just making sure all those groups communicate with each other, um, you know, and keep up to date because we share a common code base. And so, you know, there are some pitfalls with it. Um, but like, for instance, uh, at the end of this month, we're going to have a big production summit in Austin, Texas. We're going to bring all the team leaders from all the air, all around the world are going to get together and we're going to uh, sort of basically jam on the plan for this year, which modules are going to get released and who's responsible for what. So uh, it's a lot of coordination, but I think ultimately it will, it will make a better product because each team isn't too big and so they can sort of be tight and really focus on a, a, a sort of smaller a set of goals so it's not so overwhelming because like if you were just one big team trying to make Star Citizen it's pretty overwhelming with all the different things you have to do whereas this way you have a team that just cares about okay let's make the best first person combat let's make the best dogfighting let's make the best walking around on the planet side experience I don't feel like we're building the game in such a way that like, it forces you to spend money. I just think it's going to be a personal choice where someone has 
a lot of time and so they're gonna have a great time playing the game and so on maybe not have as much time but they really like this one Pacific kind of ship so maybe they'll spend a little bit of extra cash to get some game credits to buy that ship ultimately in the game uh, but the other really key thing where like you know I see all these like oh well it's pay to win because you spend money to get this better ship everyone has this idea of a better ship well that's absolutely nonsense because the way this universe and the way the game is set up and works, it's, first of all, there's always a skill factor of how you fly a ship, right? So it's not like a typical, like everyone's used to these sort of uh, free to play games where, you know, basically you know this level 60 character, you click on to attack a level 10 character, you'll beat that level 10 character all the time because, you know, there's not really much skill involved in that combat. You're just basically saying attack or whatever, defend. Um, so first of all, you already have that. But the other thing to remember is that the ships themselves um, just because you have a destroyer or a corvette doesn't mean that you're always going to be beating people flying fighters. It's just like the real world. It's sort of, there's a lot of rock, paper, scissors about it and different ships have different roles. So this ship's really good for trading. This ship's really good for dogfighting. You know, uh, this ship's really good for smuggling. This ship's good for command and control. And so all these different vehicles have different uh, functions in the game. And so it's not like, okay, well, I've got the, you know, like the Corvette. I mean, that's a $1,250 ship, right? But it's a ship that eight players can run all together and have like three or four ships on board. And so it's, it's like a base, really. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you'll beat everyone if you're flying that ship because a couple of players well organized in, in their fighter craft could probably take you down if they're good players and you're not playing particularly well on the other side. So I definitely think that, you know, people are applying the sort of traditional um, kind of like gaming system where it's like, okay, you know, I'm basically on a ladder and I'm going to be the best shooter. I mean, because, you know, in Star Citizen, what is win? I mean, you know, some people's definition of win would be a successful uh, merchant. Some people will be a successful mercenary. Some will be a successful pirate. Um, and they, you know, some people may not even focus on combat. They may just work on trading and some people may focus on combat. So there it's the idea in Star Citizen is there is no win, so to speak. There's not one king of the hill. It's just like, you know, what career path do you want to follow? And, you know, I'm constantly surprised by the community because I read, you know, there's people that just want to deliver packages and some people just want to be like the AAA of space and go out and fix people that break down. I mean, it's awesome. I mean, it's not, you know, it's there, you know, like, is that win or is that not win? You know what I'm saying? It's, so that's that's why I think some of the, the, the mentality that you, you see a traditional free-to-play say MMO where it's all about level grinding to get to level 80 or level 100 and that's how they, they everyone thinks about what you win you know I win because I get to level 81st Nah, that's not really the way um, Star Citizen works first of all there's no levels in how you play you're just who you are and it's really just about what you want to do and so I think it's more about like the ship that would be best for the role you want to do and then of course besides all these ships there's all this equipment that you can put on them and you can customize the ship you know, even the same hull can, one can be sort of put towards more combat and brawling and the other could be put towards more speed or stealth. Um, so there's so much option and so much variety that, you know, it, I think if you just had a big bankroll, it would be very difficult for you to come into the game, spend a bunch of money and beat everyone. You'd probably get your, you'd probably get your ass handed to you by people that have been playing for a lot longer than you and haven't spent as much money or don't even have as powerful of a ship.